I was thinking that a late May, early June release was perfectly reasonable. Now I'm thinking more of an August to October. Yeah, so that guy was a complete idiot. So I recently made a video going over how Wuthering Waves might have a slightly delayed release schedule due to a lot of the changes that they were having to make from CBT2. And that was wrong. They just now announced that they will instead be releasing very soon in a live stream this morning. The live stream reminded me a lot of the Genshin Q&As, but more cringy because it was live action and it wasn't the little chibi sprites and it involved the voice actors of the game and instead involved one of the developers. It was also all in uh, Mandarin, so you had to read subtitles, which was a bit annoying. It then transitioned into a very nice cinematic trailer with a very great song company to it. And there he congratulated everyone for signing up for the game as well as uh, gave his appreciation from on behalf of the entire development team. And then he went in to mention that 16 million people have already pre-registered for Weathering Waves. And then he set some goals for us to reach with further pre-registrations. Right now at 16 million pre-registrations we will get 80,000 shell credits. 10 advanced resonance potions, which I believe are the purple tier uh, XP for characters. And then 200 Ace Right, which is basically a pool and a half or something like that. Moving forward into 20 million, we will get a sigil, which is, I believe is a, a cosmetic for your account called In Route. At 30 million, we will get 20 lustrous ties. And for all the follows they get across all platforms, uh, we will get a selection coffer for a free four-star weapon from the Ranger series. Um, as far as if those weapons are any good or not, I don't know. I didn't get to play the CBT2. But that's still pretty cool. It's definitely something reachable for those different uh, things. And I, I'd imagine you would still get the rewards even if we don't wind up reaching it just because they want the release to be as hype as possible. He talked about some of the changes that were made from the Weathering Waves closed beta test 2 starting with the ecosystem. Uh, to help cut down on the grind you can now take five useless echoes and then convert them into a random number of different echoes that you already have. So you can get like one echo from a new set back or you can get three as we've seen in order to make it to where you don't feel so bad for getting a shiny with bad stats they made it to where you can equip the shiny skin to a non-shiny that has good stats while that is cool i want to know if that makes the non-shiny count as a shiny like how how the set bonus works is you can't have two of the exact same echo Unless one is a shiny, then you can have like two of the same one. So does that mean that, you know, let's take the crownless for an example. Say I got the shiny crownless and it was bad. And I put the skin of the shiny crownless on a not shiny crownless. Does that non shiny crownless now count as a shiny or the set bonus? That's something that I would like to know. And I guess we might have to wait for the game to come out before we know that. They also adjusted some of the cinematic angles and the like lip sync and stuff for a lot of the quests, giving the NPCs more movement and such. Honestly, I think they were already good enough to begin with, especially whenever you compare it to their competition, Genshin Impact. I love Genshin Impact story, but 90% of the cutscenes are three characters in a room standing next to each other doing the basic idle animation where they slightly like tilt their head forward and like move their arms wide and then back to their default stance. It's not all that great. So while I do appreciate the changes coming to the cinematics in Weathering Waves, they already looked better to me than what Genshin Impact had, uh, at least from like lip, lip syncing and all that. Uh, and then he went over the sound effect. This was a big one. 
for uh, feedback was that the sounds didn't sound like they punched enough, like there wasn't enough kickback to it. Uh, they didn't sound chunky enough, I guess is another way to say it. And that has been addressed. It gave some examples. I especially like the one of Zhen Yan, um, where he's like flying through the air and then he stabs his spear into the ground as he lands. It sounds so much better with the changes that have been made. We Nice. Um, from there, he didn't really have a lot of time to go over anything else. I kind of wish that this was a bit longer. Uh, I think in total, well, this was a 13-ish, 20-ish minute uh, total thing. Like, if you're not counting the trailers, I think it was like 13 minutes of actual info. And the trailers were really nice, but I would have liked a little bit more info about the changes that were made since closed beta test 2 and what they are currently working on, but we didn't really get that. It ended out with a gameplay trailer that also revealed that the release date will be on May 22nd. Uh, this is Pacific time, I believe. So, you know, adjust to your time zone from there. And with that, I'm actually going to be live here on YouTube for the release of Weathering Waves. I'm probably going to stream for like four or five days straight just this game. So. If you are interested at all in seeing my take on Weathering Ways or seeing some gameplay of it before you try it out yourself, come join me for that. And that's kind of it for today's video. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Click on this video right here to see Azure Permilia and my thoughts on the trailer recently for that. And I'll see you in a future video. Peace.